Hey everybody, uh, Lance here again, uh, doing the live video for the day. Um, as you probably saw, the video focus for today, um, a little bit less technical regarding the, um, the fitness and diet and things like that. Um, a big part of why I do what I do has more to do with mindset um, and more to do with um, what motivates us, what inspires us way more than just the diet and nutrition aspects. The reason why, it's not to diminish, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies are super bad today, so puffiness in the eyes and allergy stuff and coughing and all that, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Um, nevertheless, though, it's not to diminish the um, the nutrition, um, the, the science behind that, it's not to diminish the um, the importance or the value of exercise and having good metabolic workouts, um, you know, and compounding those things as I taught before. The main reason that this becomes so crucial um, to focus on mindset is just because that's the number one factor that gets in our way and prevents us from long-term sustainable effects. So, <clears throat> Hi, Tammy. Um, hey, and as you guys uh, join in too, if you don't mind, um, hit the like button or the love button to let me know that you're there, you're listening, etc. like you just did. Um, and then that also kind of helps to, um, you know, to show everybody Facebook limits, um, even inside of the group that you guys are all part of, it limits um, what you guys are able to see. So the more you guys, um, you know, engage on posts and the more you guys engage in these videos and things like that, it helps um, other people to be able to see that whenever Facebook's trying to limit it. So, hi there. Um, so, um, if you're just joining me, I'm, you know, speaking of the uh, the reasons why um, our, you know, our big why is so important. Um, and so, nevertheless, the, uh, the mindset is oftentimes what prevents us from long-term sustainable results because I don't want to get into so much that I'm overwhelming, but at the same time though, I do want to talk about the, um, the overall principles. One of the main ones is that we are motivated through inspiration or desperation, one of the two. And so we oftentimes don't find inspiration. We don't get inspired to change or we don't get inspired to stay in this change until we become desperate. And so what that usually means is it's kind of like, you know, you don't take vitamins, um, you don't eat right, you don't exercise, you get sick, um, you come down with something, all of a sudden now it's like, I've got to get my stuff together. There's a level of desperation that happens. Um, and likewise, you know, when I've seen clients, I've seen people, friends, family, get diagnosed with something that is life altering, something that is, um, you know, considered to be terminal. You'll notice people that might not have had willpower or wouldn't consider themselves to have willpower, all of a sudden be so willing to do anything that it would take. I mean, they'll cut out meats, they'll cut out, you know, fats and dairy and any of the things that they love because they're so desperate to either maintain that level of life that they've enjoyed, um, you know, or to ha create a change that's hopefully not too late. And so we want to find ourselves inspired long before we get to that point of desperation. But when you get inspired in the right way, you can act as if you are desperate because you feel so much the, the what if, <clears throat> the what if I get to that point, what will I do? Or what if, you know, fast forward a year from now, nothing changes, you know? And so what I normally like to ask people too is because so often it's not that when you fast forward, nothing changes. If I were to ask you right now, um, in six months from now, what would have had to have happened over the last six months for you to feel like this was a success? What gets you truly excited about the next six months? <clears throat> and the fact of the matter is, you know, when you look forward and you start thinking about, oh, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to lose, you know, two to three pounds a week. I want to be at this point. <clears throat> Those are the things that lead up to it. But I want to be in this size dress. You know, I want to be in this size whatever. I want to be in photos 
um, without hiding. I want to wear, you know, uh, clothing that flatters my features instead of, um, you know, wearing clothing that hides my problem areas. The fact of the matter, though, is we fast forward six months and I ask people, what happens if nothing changes? But in reality, it's not that nothing will change over six months. The reality, reality is if you don't change something, we don't just stagnate. That doesn't happen. That's not our human nature. And that's not the way that the body works because there's gravity and we're getting older and um, we get more emotional. And if you already have emotionally bad habits you know, for eating or what have you, um, what happens is on average, the average person in America will gain one to two pounds a month if they're not actively um, pursuing either weight loss or staying healthy, etc. So the real question is, fast forward six months, and if you've gained two pounds a month, you've gained another 12 pounds in six months. What does that mean for you? How does that feel? And what I, the reason I ask this is so that you can stop and think like there are real consequences if I don't decide to get desperate and I don't let this inspire me. And so I encourage you to think about what inspires you right now. What inspires you thinking about six months from now? What inspires you, you know, about one year from now? What are the consequences if you don't change and if you don't stick with it this time? So oftentimes I'll hear people say that they've, they have yo-yoed. And what yo-yoing is, is that you have essentially gotten some form of results and reverted and then got results and reverted or done a good and then reverted. And so if we're serious about getting these results, if we're serious about changing, what possibility, what reason would allow us to actually go back? It's not that we enjoy, you know, that lifestyle of not liking the way that we look. It's not that we enjoy not fitting into something or going into the dressing room, tugging at it, seeing those awful bright lights, you know, shine all over everything and going, good Lord, what have I done? We don't enjoy that. So what possibility you know, would be there that would allow us to make decisions or not make decisions that would get us right back to that. So, and the real thing is, and this is what I'm getting to here, is that it really does come to mindset. So we are motivated. We make every decision based on pain or pleasure within the brain on a subconscious level, on a conscious level, etc. And the fact of the matter is, Every decision that you're making is either seeking out the um, fulfillment of pleasure of some kind, whether that's elevated status, <clears throat> seeing, you know, noticing that somebody else notices you in a positive light, that they perceive you in a positive light, that they like you, that you're a contribution to, contribution to society. All of these things are the seeking out of pleasure. The other is the avoidance of pain. And so, if you don't let yourself feel that pain of where you're truly at right now, the pain of thinking about the bright lights inside of those dressing rooms and how you feel, maybe you've shed tears, maybe this is something that you put this on and you were too embarrassed to walk out or you took yourself off, you're, you've got somebody else with you and you're supposed to show them how this looks on you and you shed it off and switch back your clothes and walk out with this thing like bunched up, you know, tightly in your hand because you're too embarrassed to even show them and you're frustrated and you're irritated and you just want to walk out. That's painful. And if you only let yourself feel that just for a moment and then say it's not that bad, you're not being honest with yourself and the avoidance of that pain never truly happens, which means that your goals are not deep enough. Your um, your reasons why are not deep enough. <clears throat> so the purpose of this video is specifically to inspire um, not just hope, but to inspire you to come up with your big reasons why. Your reasons why should be something that you should be able to say, I want to get to X weight or X um, <clears throat> size, or I want to be in a bikini by this time. I want to whatever, you know, pick something, you know, that you want to do. And you should be able, be able to, towards the end of that, to say, so that, and I want to be in a bikini by this time, so that when I'm out in public, I'm no longer embarrassed to go swimming. When I am trying on clothing, I don't have to feel like, 
you know, the, the girl that's, you know, grabbing um, articles of clothing for me in a size that's, you know, three sizes bigger than what she wears isn't condescending upon me, you know, and or that, you know, my ex looks at me this way or, you know, something like that. But if it does not have emotional grit behind this, uh, this reason why it's not deep enough, it has to be something bigger than just to lose weight and be healthy. We all want that. We all want to lose weight, to be healthy, um, you know, to feel better. All of these cliche things that, uh, you know, the trainers and coaches get from clients are those sort of things. I want to feel better. I want to look better. Um, you know, I just, I want more energy, all of those things. And I believe that you want those things. It's just that that's not the reason why you would click to get into this group. It's not the reason why you would you know, take a stab at seven days of something that's immersive and something that's like this. And so <clears throat> the fact is, is if you're not focused on what that reason why is, you're doing yourself a great, great disservice. So my challenge to you is to figure out what your struggles are. What is your reason why? What are you looking to accomplish? And what I want you to do is post those beneath the video today um, I want you to go ahead and share like, this is my big reason why. I want you to think about it. I don't want you to post something like, you know, I want to be in a smaller dress size. I want to be healthy. I want to X, Y, and Z. I want you to say something with some emotional grit behind it. I want you to share, I'm doing this and I'm determined to be in this size or at this level or, you know, pick something that's quantitative by this time, create a deadline, you know, because that's the thing is, you know, a goal without a deadline is just a dream, but it becomes reality when you schedule it. So make sure that you do provide a schedule, a deadline for this to reach it. And then what we do is we reverse engineer that and we create, okay, if we need to be 50 pounds lighter, <clears throat> you know, in six months or eight months or what have you, then we go, okay, well, you know, we divide that by eight months, we figure out how much, you know, per month that is, and then an approximation on um, how many pounds that is per week. And then from there we go, okay, well, what do we have to do? And that's where I come in. That's the mathematics that come in there that I go, a pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So we need to burn up, you know, um, uh, 3,500 calories a week, but we also need to create a 3,500 calorie deficit through your food. And so that'll equal two pounds a week safely. And then when you factor your metabolism in, et cetera, and the afterburn effect and all that, you that's where you can end up burning, you know, three, five, six, seven pounds, um, you know, in a week and depleting the body of some of the uh, the things that cause inflammation. So, um, so your homework today is to be really thinking about your why. What reason? Why are you here? Why are you in this group? And what is your plan after the seven days? I'll be sharing a little bit on, you know, <clears throat> going forward with me after the seven days, but it's not about me. This is about you. This is about having a real um, action taking plan that allows you to reach this stuff. And as I said before, that our mindset is what gets in the way. What happens is we tend to have this cycle <clears throat> where we feel pain, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we feel pain, we take action. <clears throat> and then what happens is we start seeing results and the pain diminishes, and then so we lessen our intensity, and then the results start stifling, and then the results stop, and then we're right back to where we started. And usually being back where we started is actually worse because at that point we've kind of given a little bit of ourselves up that we're just like, oh, I'm tired, I'm whatever, because we weren't really driving um, through emotion and through that um, those reasons why. So those seven steps that often lead to destruction, usually without a major action plan, this is what happens. So those seven steps, we do that like clockwork because we don't allow ourselves to truly feel the pain deep enough to set goals that have so much emotional teeth that we just, that we're not able to sink into that. So what happens is life happens. We stop feeling the pain as much. We get comfortable. And the thing of it is, is comfort whenever you're, you know, like really inspired to get out of whatever you're in. If you're truly honest with yourself and 
the level of unhappiness that you might feel. I don't mean overall, but I mean the unhappiness that you feel about your confidence, your self-esteem, what you wear. You know, do you avoid pictures? Do you avoid going out in places? Do you avoid certain clothing items? If you do, you're in bondage. You, you are absolutely in chains of some kind. You can convince yourself it's not that bad. And, you know, I've seen so-and-so and they're bigger. Or they're this or they're that. Or it used to be worse. But that's not anything to even mention because the fact of the matter is mediocrity is not something that I want any of us to settle for. And mediocre, mediocrity is not comparing yourselves to other people. Mediocrity is knowing that you're settling for less than what you're capable of. And when you're going, it's not that bad, it's not this, and yet you're feeling some um, unhappiness or you're feeling anything that is... Um, you know, less than uh, emotionally satisfying for you, you're doing yourself a disservice. So the fact of the matter is, I want you to be focusing on your reasons why. I want you to focus on everything that you're doing that's going to drive you so that whenever you have life happen, when you have things that get in the way, or that pain diminishes just for a little bit and it creeps in and tells you like, hey, it was worse before, I can rest, I can relax a little bit, that that doesn't happen because that does not mean that you're gonna relax and rest for a few minutes. The subconscious allows you to start relaxing and resting and we get lazy and we get comfortable and then we completely backslide right back into the old ways. Only this time we have you know metabolism damage and we have all of this going on that really stifles us from doing that. So I'll be talking a little bit more about <clears throat> um, the you know, damaged metabolism what that means, how to reverse diet, all that stuff um, coming up in my uh, my VIP coaching for you guys who, who join my exclusive program. Um, so that's something that I'll be going into in great depth. Um, but again, for this video, what I want you guys to do is all post beneath this video and I want you to share your reasons why. I want you to share why you're here. I want you to share what your goal is. And if you don't know your big reason why yet, I wanna help you with that. So I want you to reach out with me and go, I know that I'm, I'm dissatisfied, but I'm having trouble coming up with my underlying motivation. What is the deep, deep part that will be strong enough to drive me? Because I, to be honest, I am unhappy. I don't want to stay where I'm at and I need your help. So I want you to do that. If you need my help on that, I'm here. This is what my coaching program is all about. So um, today is far less about um, the fitness and exercise and form and technique and all of the scientific stuff like that. This is about the psyche, the emotions, um, and creating a lasting environment that's going to take you into where you want to go and keep you there. So, because results that aren't lasting are really not results. So that's um, you know that's it. So Tammy, I see that. So um, what I want to do is talk with you about that. So you know specifically why? Because what's happening is if you're not sure your reasons why, you know that you're uncomfortable. You know that there's dissatisfaction, but you don't really have a driving force that will push you deep enough that you feel pain if you're not doing the right things and that you feel pleasure when you are doing the right things. So we got to get that to where you're changing the mindset so that you're getting things um, accomplished each day that aren't based on discipline. I don't want you guys doing things every single day because you're disciplined. I don't do things because I'm disciplined. I'm a very undisciplined, unorganized type person. I do things that seem like I'm disciplined because of the fact that I'm driven. I know if I don't exercise, if I don't have a goal that's attainable, if I don't do things that get me to where I look better in my shirts, um, I look good in my pictures. And in fact, if I gain, you know, four or five pounds, you know, um, a lot of times I'll see that in my face, my face starts looking puffy and swollen. That for me is something that makes me very self-conscious. So that is something that I focus on. Um, if I start noticing it even a little bit, then that's something that I start just driving the crap out of my workouts and more intensity into what I'm doing. And I let that pain hit me and that fear of, oh God, I don't want to have to feel like, you know, here as a, you know, uh, as a coach or a trainer that in my pictures, I've got to explain why my face looks so rounded and, and, you know, almost, you know, and other people may not notice it, but that's not why I'm doing it. It's not the bother, you know, it's the fact that I feel almost like I have to justify why I look like this in a certain video or picture or whatever. And that 
cut that hurts and I want that to hurt because I don't want to get in that point that I just sit and let that be okay and to justify well there's other trainers who aren't in shape at all you know well at least you can you know I can see some vascularity in my arms and what bull crap it doesn't matter what matters is what makes me feel good about what I'm doing what matters is how I feel when I see my pictures and knowing that I'm not settling for mediocrity. So um, so this is something to focus on. Um, I've got some techniques that I'm going to give out. I'll probably go through and post another file to the group on finding your 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 deep why, your, your emotional reason. So that's what I want to help everybody with. Um, this is what this group is truly about. It is so much more than just nutrition. This is why I do coaching now instead of private training. Because this stuff here is what keeps results. And the people who worked with me privately, I constantly donated extra time outside of our sessions because it's so much more about just the workouts and the nutrition. So I put so much extra time because I look for lasting results and life's going to happen at times. But the fact of the matter is I never want somebody to revert. And I know for a fact there was uh, one of my most successful clients um, her name was Susan years ago, um, and you know here in St. Louis, I did this lose a ton challenge. Um, you know, I didn't care for the name of that, but I did this challenge, and um, she placed second place. I was the um, I was the the coach who was um, assigned to her. We were you know basically we all you know tried out for this thing. It was hosted on the you know the local news and and all of this stuff. And it was a, the first prize was a trip to Jamaica, and it was like a five thousand dollar trip. It wasn't like the you know, some, oh, here you go and stay three nights. This was like a 10 day stay. It was a huge, huge thing for the person who lost the most. Um, and it was based on total percentage of weight, you know, that they lost. So uh, a percentage of body weight. So it wasn't like whoever loses the most weight wins. It was whoever loses the greatest percentage of their current body weight, you know, is who wins. And I helped her to lose 70.5 pounds in three months. So it was pretty insane what she did. And we didn't do anything that was unsafe or unhealthy. Um, we did train every single day, but the the real issue was we, um, you know, they, they assigned everybody the same three meals a day, which I disagreed with. So I told her very first and foremost to split those meals in half. So you had six smaller meals that way we keep the metabolism going. And so I'm going to use science and we're going to cheat this thing. You know, we're going to do what all the other trainers should be doing, but they're not doing. So we did this and she placed second place by like 0.01% because she just had a little bit more to lose, you know, to keep up with this other person. And the fact of the matter is, several years later, she reached, reached out to me. And the thing, because I taught her so much on sustainability and not just here's how to lose weight, but it's here's how to live and here's how to focus on your why so that you never come back to this. And we spoke about that constantly. And after talking with her after several years, she ended up dropping almost 150 pounds. So she stayed with it long after she worked with me. And she lived way out of the area. So she wasn't going to keep on working with me. And I eventually moved anyhow. But for her to reach out and say years later, not only did I keep the weight off that you helped me lose, I actually dropped double of that based on the principles that you taught me and I'm never going back. And the fact of the matter is I'm proud of that, not because of what I taught her. I'm proud of that because it sunk in and it had nothing to do with the exercise because I was no longer training her and it had nothing to do with like some sort of diet secret or sticking to my diet. She understood the value <clears throat> of determining her reason why and she stayed within the parameters of what her body needed and she exercised regularly and she did it without discipline because she was so driven and motivated so that's my goal that's my reason why i'm doing this video so my fulfillment comes from helping you guys out not only seeing you guys get results but seeing lasting results so my challenge my challenge for myself what my reason why is is to help you guys to get results and to keep results and for you guys to pledge and to know how many times you know you might have pledged before like oh this is the last time I'm never doing this again I'm never gonna go back here but I want you to be able to say that and know that something's different this time something's so different because I've been shown a new way a new method and it starts here and it starts here and so I want to make sure that you guys when you pledge on this video and through this week that I will never go back 
You can say, I will never go back because my reason why is so big and here's my reason why. I will never go back because I know how to do this without discipline because I'm so intently focused on the pleasure that I know where I'm going and the avoidance of pain because I've let myself feel the agony of how bad this freaking feels and I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing it. But if you've not let yourself feel that, if you got to cry, do that. But look at pictures, thumb through stuff and let yourself freaking feel how bad this is for you. And I don't do that so you can have a miserable crappy day. I do that because I want you to be real. And if you're just diminishing and saying like it's not that bad and it's only 15 pounds, it's only 20 pounds. I've had some people have so little self-esteem that I've worked with who were five pounds overweight and then other people who were almost identical or had you know more self-esteem who were 100 pounds overweight. It has nothing to do with the weight. It has to do with the self-image and how you feel about yourself. And so my job, my goal here is to help you to overcome all of that. So that's what I'm here for. So I hope that this helps. Um, please comment below if you're not sure what your, um, your why is. I still want to hear from you. <clears throat> I will be reaching out. There's a lot of you. I know that you're busy. I know that things are going on, but you're not commenting in the group. Um, you're not staying active. I want to see engagement. Um, and I should have mentioned, I totally didn't mention the other day that uh, the second prize the three month um, actually goes out and that one is going to be based on who the person that is most engaged inside of the group is. So um, the more engaged you guys can be to where you're liking and loving videos um, and comments, you're commenting on things, you're sharing things every day, the person who is most engaged, it will not be a, um, a random for this one. This one is going to be the person who is the most active in the group. Um, you know, and, and is getting great results, etc. So uh, be sure to be as engaged as you freaking can in this whole thing. I want to see as much of you as I can. I'm going to start reaching out to you guys and finding out how your workouts are going, etc. Um, so I'm going to try and be as involved as I can. So um, thanks for tuning in. I know this one was a little bit longer than usual, um, but I really wanted to give this inf information. So I hope that uh, I at least spoke fast enough that it, uh, it was at least captivating through the whole thing. So thanks for tuning in and I will check you guys later.